Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Because it's too wonky. All right, we're here. This is from Skagfest. Uh, yeah, we're here. Look at this. Nice artwork here. Well done. Now, I got to shake out the comments because I just finished an episode of Mindful Metal Jacket with Katie Hannigan. And we uh, were talking, you know, our parents finger fucking us and uh, getting hit. Not that different. I guess that's, <laughs> that's a good point. That's right in line with this pod. But, what do you got? Uh, your crib notes there? What's that? Oh, some... I don't know what this is. Oh, XL... okay. I thought you had little pod notes. This just says Lewis sucks. I don't know who wrote that, but... Uh, oh, I wrote that last night. Yes, digital. <laughs> <laughs> By but, the way, there's a DeRosa fund. You see that? A DeRosa what now? A fund. A fund? A fund, yeah. DeRosa fund, because he, he lost a couple grand on the, the trans hooker. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so everybody's trying to put money in the bucket to get him his money back. Oh, wow. He took a beating down there at the regs. <laughs> Everyone's got a... Does that regs episode go out like a regular episode, or was that just for Mint Comedy? Is Any idea? Yeah. Oh, it's like, it, I mean, it was, I, I didn't even participate because it was all about like, he's gay, he sucked a dick, he sucks dick. He liked it. He told me, he's like, it was so hot. The trans person blew me. And I saw that. It was like Leah Thomas. I mean, 6'4", <laughs> shoulders, the whole thing. Yeah, it sounds like he blew Scotty Pippen <laughs> yeah. or got blown by, excuse <laughs> yeah. me, but handied. Travel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was all over that cock and she, he jerked her off and loved it. Um, I was telling you right before, we just had a great diner hang. We could have used you. Uh, Denny's, huh? And we went to Denny's. It was me, Karen Fian, Ian Lara, and Lev Fur, who was oh. one of the quickest guns out there. He's a quick for a fatty. He can shake it up. I mean, he really has some good zingers, but he had the best one of the. He's a big, fat, handsome guy. <laughs> and I said, um, <laughs> I got, he's very attractive. He's uh, got a beautiful eyes, but when you get past the, the cheek fat. And you get into the eyeball. It's nice. He's going well. Another quick one that was funny that wasn't has nothing to do with him. I, I'm, I'm all jacked up. I yeah, haven't seen yeah, you. I've been, I've, been, I've been out on I this got, podcast without you. I gotta pump it up. Well, I, first of all, you've skipped the last nine skank fest, so it's good to have you here. I missed one, two. I was Houston, in Houston. Houston, you were there on the Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> we did a fucking thing. You were there for four hours. I got a lanyard. No, no, you, you weren't there. And uh, we last did a show. We had a lot of pods, and there's proof. Yeah, but it was Thursday, and the pod, the special, the, whatever the fuck this is called, festivals Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right. Well, I flew out Friday, so I was there a little bit. Well, that was the most brutal one because you were there for a minute. Oh. So all week, everyone's like, "Where'd Mark go?" And I'm like, "He's not here, you son of a bitch." Oh yeah. And last year it was great because I was king of the castle without you there. There you go. I mean, Shane was around, but what That's are you going to do? Well, he bailed this week, so you're you're back. I'm back, baby. By the way, did you hear what uh, Mike Suarez did to James Mattern? Uh, hey, that was supposed to be mine. Mushy Mike? Uh, yeah. Uh, to James Mattern, no. I got all kinds of stories. I can't Remind wait. to come back to the original Lev and then the other Lev. There's two Levs? I got, it looks like it. <laughs> 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 Wait, what, what story do you want first? I want the Denny's. The Denny's. Okay, so we go to Denny's. It's me. Ian, Laura, Karen, Fee, and Lev Fur. You got it. And uh, oh, yeah. I get, I get uh, waffles or what do you call it? Pancakes. And you know uh, me, I need extra butter. Flapjacks. So I go, I got to get this guy. I need extra butter. And Lev goes, oh, I got you. <laughs> Is that gold? Is there anything better than a fat guy who knows he's fat? <laughs> he goes into his pocket. Uh, <laughs> <That's a gotcha. laughs> the beauty butter. of it is everybody here's got shrooms. I got weed. I got acid. He's got butter. He's he's hoarding he's butter. butter. He's a butter pocket. dealer. Ooh, that was a good uh, one. That's that one. a country crock. That one really got me. <clears throat> there was a few other great ones. I um, got gotcha. uh, You know what's weird about these fat guys? And I love Lev, and he's huge. But they wear the all black. Like, we don't know what's going on. Like, we all know black is something. I can see that you're 600 pounds. The it, black is doing nothing. That was like one of my first jokes about shirts in the pool. I was like 19 years old. It was uh, like, the fat guys, <coughs> they wear the shirt in the pool. I'm right. like, who do you think you're tricking? <laughs> yeah, it's like, we see the shirt. I'm like, what do you got, six pack abs under there? I can't <laughs> see. You got a t shirt <laughs> you on. You got an Argyle sweater on. Not to mention, when you get out, the thing sucks to every <laughs> roll in the city. But anyway, so that was a that was a fun one. And then uh, the smell, you made a face. Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, okay. You kind of did a dip. I did a, a, a swivel, but I didn't want to lose you, so I, I kept the neck with you. Ah, I see. Okay. But uh, if they smell, just let me know. I'll shove them in my ass and nah. clean them up. 
I got COVID. I don't smell anything. <clears throat> I think I might too. No. Well, I did, uh, you know, a show and a guy had a thing, and I don't have oh, COVID. Really? Sorry, there's like nine people in the room. I I'm can just hear kidding. a little uh, gurgle. Well, I think it's a lot of secondhand smoke. We've been sucking down cigars like they're cock. Yeah, Rosa. those ones yesterday hit me pretty good. I was uh, balloon headed. <laughs> well, I think those were like cheapo depot. I don't know what those were. Yeah, that was a rubber fire. <laughs> What's that? I said a rubber fire. I shouldn't have said that because Tom and Kristen brought them, and they're huge Tuesdays. Oh, they're great cigars. Those are first class. Very nice. These yeah. are different. Good gift. Thanks for saving a few bucks on the cigars. Yeah. Those. What are those? What's the bad one? Primo? What's the shit? Phillies. Oh, it's Philly Phillies blunts? Are, those are bad? Well, those are like fake. They're oh, for like blunts. I, think, I see. Something. Okay. I don't know. But wait, what was the other... Oh, yeah, you had another Lev or a Butter or a Denny's. Oh, I thought this was funny. We're all hanging out last night at the Smokers Lounge there, and uh, I was like, I said to Ian Lara, I'm like, you're the most attractive man at this festival. Probably. And Lev goes, what are you kidding? I'm more attractive than him. Oh, and ego. Then, and then we all go, no, you're not. And then Katie Hannigan, who's the one woman there, who's just little petite Katie, yeah. goes... No, definitely not. And it was so good because it wow. just it just hit because it's like men talking about men. Yes. You're like, who know? What do we know? Exactly. And then the one lady with like glasses was like, absolutely not. Yes. And uh, it was really fun for him to take that. And she she's a little cute Midwestern lady, so she has no ill intention. She's just stating a fact. She's like, yeah, no, you're out of your fucking mind. He was hot though, like ten years ago when he was thin and straight. He was hot. He's still hot. He's still dreamy. Natalie. I don't yeah, know she's dreamy. saying yes. He still is. Who's hotter, Ian Lara or Nat? Uh, you're Natalie. Uh, Ian Lara or Lev Fur? I need to look refresh on a picture of Ian. Lara. One's okay. black and five foot two, and one six one nine hundred pounds. Lev is taller, and he's got he's mysterious, but but Ian he's got is a good so face. well quaffed, quaffed, and a good smile with the perfect beard. Well dressed, and he's chocolate. He's like oh, milk chocolate. Is he Natalie, chocolate? here comes Ilar Zia. is very handsome. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah exactly. There, there you, you go. go. And she's racist. Although, so, by the way, Ian Lara's background photo is his own comedy special poster. How do you feel about that? Wait, his, his phone background? Yes, his wallpaper. That is. Nice. That's how I feel about that wallpaper. <laughs> that is horseshit. What a wacko. <laughs> you got to open that every time? That's oh. a little, it's a little off putting. <laughs> That was pudding. The last thing I want to see is my own face on my phone. That's cuckoo. I wouldn't even put my daughter on there. I'm dying over here. This is one of the best steps ever. Uh, we haven't even got started. I, I just woke up. This is the first step we've done in six months, I just realized. Holy shit. You're right. I was nervous. Yeah, you've been in Europe. You turned 40. Uh, yeah, I'm a whole different guy. I went to Gay Paris, and I was like, oh, yeah, podcasting. What's that? So let me give you this Mike Suarez oh, uh, story, because okay. this is nuts. This is like the Inquirer. You're like the skank <laughs> newsletter. I got all kinds of gossip. I swear to God, I'm dying. It's all secondhand smoke. I'm not yeah, sick. Yeah, it'll get you. Uh, so last night, there's a comedy show. I don't know what room. Michael Suarez, hilarious comic from San Antonio. Big mushy Mike. Yeah, co-producer or old producer of You Know What, Dude. I don't know what the hell he does anymore. No. But he works somewhere. And he's Costco. hosting the show. <laughs> And he's getting ready to bring up James Mattern. <laughs> oh, yeah, the mad and dog. For whatever reason, he decides to give him an intro. He goes, all right, folks, we got a big special guest. Here he comes, Shane Gillis. Oh, no, the most coveted man at the fest. The biggest comic in the world. And not only that... He's supposed to be here oh, and so called in sick. It's kind of believable. Like, maybe he showed. Of course, so the place explodes, and he goes, I'm just kidding. It's James Mattern. Who they don't probably don't know. No offense to James, but he's not on the Gillis Episphere. No. Episphere? Maybe he's got... Hemisphere. I'm sure uh, a, a few people. He's here every year, so I'm sure a bunch of people know who he is. Yeah. And he's a great comic, but... Killer comic. He ain't Shane Gillis. No, no. that's uh, That reminds me of my first time at the Comedy Cellar. Keith Robinson hosting, pre-stroke. And he goes, uh, ladies, you're in for a treat. And I was like, oh, wow. He's being so nice to me. This is cool. And he goes, Jerry Seinfeld. The place goes ape shit. Comedy Cellar, they're on their feet, hooting and hollering. And then he goes, ah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We got Mark Norman. Uh, and I, 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 four minutes digging out of that hole. Yeah, it's uh, it was rough, but uh, I, I like you know Suarez really did a heel turn. Yeah, was he he was trying to be mean or was he trying to be funny? I think funny All probably. Right. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't witness this. Yeah, but, um, that's not good for anybody because now the audience is pissed too. 
and yeah. the comic. Yeah, and uh, it's yeah, exactly. It's a disservice. It's exactly what I said. We're always on the same page. I was like, that's a disservice to the comedian and the crowd. Yes. Like, they're like, oh, that sucks. I told you. Uh, they they, uh, they told him Shane wasn't coming, and 18 people got up in a 20-seat room, walked out. There's a guy here that was at the regs. He has a tattoo of the Notre Dame emblem logo fighting Irish yeah, guy with little... Shane's face. Oh, my God. That's a horrible idea. And he... <laughs> Blue, I know. What if Shane gets canceled? What if he says something horrible and racist, and then yeah, he just has that he tattoo would, for he life? Would never do that. But um, but I did talk to Shane, and he sounds like Harvey Firestein. He's like, oh, I can't get back. He's like fucking sick out of his mind. Really? Oh, he's got the herp, the AIDS, the scurvy. Well, something's I up. Shouldn't have kissed him, I guess. <laughs> so how's your fest? I feel like I've barely seen you. Yeah. Well, uh, I had the first night, and I'm trying to take it somewhat easy. Cause I, these festivals, they bring the evil out of me. You know, I, I, I get horned up, I get liquored up, I get shroomed up, and I hear that DeRosa trans story, and I go, that could have been me. That that sounds like a fun night. Yeah, you could have blown DeRosa. I know, I still can. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bar. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, just, I'm trying to pump the brakes. Yeah, it's it's. T- I mean, I'm horned up oh, here. Oh, well, there's I a mean, lot of talent and ugly men. There's just big, fat women who like me. You know what I mean? Like oh, the low self-esteem Joe Liss fans. That's my type. And I would just really love to grab those stretchies out and yank on them, you well, know? Well, fat women are fun because they're like guys, where they just they want to get laid, too. They're not like, oh, I need a date, and tell me you like me. No, you go, hey, you fucking bovine whore, let's hit the closet. Yeah, you want to pull those whiskers out and just yes. throw three or four fingers in them. I want to hit them with a cattle prod right when they're bent over that says MN. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm having a good time. But these, I, are you having this worry? I'm doing shows, and I go, I've seen that guy at the last show. He was at the last show. He looks like everyone else here. Uh, he's in blackface, and I'm like, they've heard it all because I want to do my new stuff always. But I've only done two sets so far. Okay, one set each night, and um, you know, there, one was a ten minute set, one's a fifteen. So I got enough material I can do different. Right. And then I did a bunch of crowd work on one. They're so hot here in the daytime at least yeah the 1 p.m shows are good and they're just you know like i i'm not i'm getting a pop here yeah yeah so they're like ah and then you can go ah look at this fucking idiot and they're really just nice and giving so i'm slow to do material but uh, oh you do a little riffing in the beginning I do a little bit of riffing smart and but now that's two sets. The third one, I'm going to really be in my head. Yeah. And the fourth and fifth tomorrow, I'm going to be like, well, I'm fucked now. Exactly. But what's great about this fest is everybody knows everything. Like, if you come out and start talking about DeRosa and the trans Leah Thomas, it'll hit. Yeah. Because everyone knows about it. Uh, but also, I think there's more people here than I realize. Mm. Like, in my mind, I did a set at the stand where there's... 125 people, and yeah. I'm like, here comes my second set. They've heard it, but yeah. I'm like, there's 2,000 people walking around. Ah, so good 98% point. still haven't seen me do stand up. How many people are here, Natalie? Any idea? Give us a, a ballpark. A thousand ish? I think it's more than that. Wow. 2,000? Okay, it? that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, at least. 2,000. That's yeah. incredible. 3500 3500 Wow. I'm getting Holy paid 100 bucks a day. Sh- yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's 3,500 people here. I've wow. done two sets in comedy clubs. Unreal. So, uh, at most, 250 people have seen me do stand-up at yeah, this festival. Yeah, but you feel like, oh, the, I like that guy. I'll go back and see him. I think there's a little of that. Yeah. Because there's certainly not all 3,500 are fans of mine. Not oh, according to no, the numbers, no anyways. No chance. But I'll tell you this. I did the Joker's Cruise years ago. Me and. Too. I'd say 1,200 people. How many people are on a cruise? I can't do numbers. 800? I don't know. Probably 1,200. Y- it feels like a little neighborhood. You're like, hey, Tom. Hey, Rocco. Like, you see everybody walking down the hall at breakfast, at the gym, at the common area, at the pool, and they've all seen it. All of them have seen your act because yeah. they're like, that's the only thing to do is go to a show. So they have big theaters on a cruise, which doesn't feel like it would fit, but it does. Yeah, they can fit anything in there. They can fit in. There's a water park, a theater, uh, like 
go karts. It's crazy. It's like Lev. Droz's ass. You can just <laughs> put something in there. Oh, I stepped on the lip. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that was hell because I was there five nights and it was just the same people over and over. You're, you're doing like OJ jokes. You're going way back. Reagan, huh? <laughs> What's up with the voodoo economics? Something D O O economics. <laughs> well, tonight I got to do Would Bueller. You Bang Him? Do you know that That's show? That's fun. You're going to have fun. That's fun? It's fun because there's no material. You just fuck around. No, I thought you do material. You might do a five minute set or something just so they can judge you, but then they they, they go, all right, let's talk. And you just talk to the judges. Now so you, you feel like a piece of meat. Am I crazy? I thought that was more like a Kill Tony, where like the open micers go on. Why I'm like uh I'm first of all, I'm married. No, it's no 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 open micer. It's it's pros. Okay. And then they sit there while you do a set, which is a little awkward. And then they go, Would you fuck him and why? Okay. So it's mostly positive. It's gonna be hurtful. Well, for you. You don't ah, have my teeth. No, I got I got genital herpes and teeth and the, the hurt forehead. Might, the hurt might hurt you a little bit, but yeah. the, the teeth they won't bring up. They're gonna go. You're tall. You're successful. You're a good guy. You, you, you don't kiss men. Yeah, you have things. You're damn right. There I you think, go. I think that's a turn on for more women than they want to admit. Oh, my wife told me she's like, if I saw you kissing a guy, I would. Divorce. <laughs> I got the same thing. My wife was born in 1978. Oh, yeah. So she's home. She says F word. She's like, let me find out you fucking hooked up with a guy. You'll be out on your ass. <laughs> she voted for no gay marriage. So that's what uh, I heard. What but, do you got? New kicks? Yeah, I got the new bell. The 550s, eh? What do you think? Uh, some kid came up and goes, oh, those are the Jamal Watkins. I'm like, uh, who's that? A criminal? I don't even know, but uh, they're very comfortable. Yeah, they're okay. Oh, I, I go 1080 as always. I'm all 1080. Oh, yeah. But I'm a runner. I got to be ready to go. A little too comfortable or uh, too colorful for me. Colorful? Yeah, it's blue, white, blue. It's all. It's 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 two a, colors. It's the same color as your shoe. What the yeah, fuck are you talking about? This is mostly white. That's a lot of gray. I guess. I can't handle the, the, the solid color, unless it's white or black or uh, Asian. You want to see a lot of gray. Take a look in the mirror, Mr. Forty. I know, I right? Mean, look at this. Just for men. I need it. You're done. You're out. You're on the way out. Salt and pep. Ah, great group. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Shoot, baby, shoot. Baby. shoot. shoot. Hoo. Hey, boy, the rap was so simple. Now it's like... Tuned up and a. I can't keep up. It's all like. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, it's really not good. It's computery. It's all auto tune. And I'm like, I can do that. Yeah, I feel the same way. How about Sagalo hitting the rap scene? I didn't hear it. He's rapping all over the place. You got it. What are you doing over there in Europe? Rapping. You don't know about Sagalo? I don't he's know. Like, I want to see candy rapper. He's what like, are you talking about? I'm Sagalo. I eat out of a bag of loaf. Gagalo. Oh, I can't handle that. That yeah. makes me uncomfortable. Oh, he raps, baby, with the best of them. Oh. Well, he's a portly little man. I want to squeeze him. He's got the same body as Kim Jong Un. Have you noticed that? I haven't really noticed. Yeah, that. That's same good point. portly shape and the flat top and everything. Oh, no kidding. He's yeah. another great hang. We've he's had good some hang. good hangs. You got to get into that smokers lounge over there. It's the best part of the whole. I haven't festival. even seen the lounge. It's right next to the merch tent oh. outside. Oh, okay. And we're all. Sit- I'm, I'm telling you, we had Ian, Lara, Lev, yeah. Bobby, Karen, me, Cannon. Uh, Soder, Cannon, right. Tom, Dustin, and we're zipping and zapping. I had a great Great moment today because Tom Dustin, who I'm making the a film about, the people know, he did the live episode, and uh, he's sitting around, you know, he's hungover, he's gay, yep. and uh, the, here's the scenario, guys, which is ending, by the way. I got all the gossip. Who's that? Oh, that's ending. <laughs> exactly. Oh, shit. I did that pod. What a waste. It's Canon, Sagalo, and Feeney, yes. and uh, they gave themselves three years. It didn't work, although it's a hilarious show. I liked it. All hilarious guy. I said, why don't you try dropping one member and see what happens? Yeah, we all know who. I just <laughs> stared at the ceiling. I didn't want to give away. I didn't want to tip my hand. We'll spin a bottle. But um, anyway, so that's uh, that's kaputs. Wow. I don't I don't, I don't, I don't, get, don't dig into that. We, we, we've been going 12 years or whatever it is. <laughs> 10 the first, years this month. And the first eight years were nothing. Yeah, ten <laughs> years this month. Happy to have you along. Queef it up. My father's gay. Yeah, so uh, ten years. That's Crazy. Insane. Crazy. It's like that scene in Gross Point Blank with Jeremy Piven. Ten years. Yeah, that's a decade. We made a decade. A dime. Underrated film, by the way. You like Gross Point Blank? It's When's the last time you, time you sniffed it? Well, I saw it on Comedy Central in 1981 and had uh, the commercials, and I was in and out with a duck hunt going, you know, while it was on in the back. But uh-huh. uh, it's been too long. Mini Driver. Mini Driver, who's so hot. Very and, hot. And uh, amazing soundtrack. And uh, Cusack, who's as good as it gets, and uh-huh. Piven, and Dan Aykroyd is in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he would pop in. He was in Tommy Boy. He would jump around from movie to movie. I watched Tommy Boy on the flight. Oh, still fun. 
Farley's great. Slower than I remember too, but it's the nineties. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's it's fun. I mean, I still, you know, yeah. I great. mean, it's some horse shit like a million brake pads. <laughs> right. All that stuff is like, all right, all right. What is this? A lifetime movie? Yeah, there's some problems, but uh, you know, Farley is just so fucking funny. Don't call me worthless. I'm doing my best. I hadn't heard that in a long time, and when I was in high school, that's all we said. We said that. Oh, really? All the time. That was like one of our go-to lines. Interesting. That's the line that grabbed you. I never thought about that one. Oh, yeah. It's a big one and a uh, great film. So similar to so many comedies. You know what's funny? I was thinking about there was like three comedies in 12 months about just a really dumb guy. There was like Billy Madison, Dumb and Dumber, and Tommy Boy. Yeah. Like, just like a kind of oh, retarded yeah. guy. That's right. And Forrest Gump won the Oscar. So Good point. the retard was, was pumping. Good or bad or, or funny or serious. But oh. I forgot I was telling a story. Oh, sorry. Let me just say this. You ever? I rewatched uh, ten minutes of Billy Madison. The comfort it must take. I, I don't have any of this confidence to go. Stop looking at me, Swan. With a film crew, there's a whole crew. There's craft service. There's a director and a, and a chair with a with a bullhorn. And could you ever do that in front of those people? No. The best example of that to me is the fucking Will Ferrell audition. You ever watch the Will Ferrell audition for SNL? For SNL, no, they play the comedians in cars. I don't remember it. I'll, He's I'll rewatch. Doing a cat. You remember? He's like playing a cat. And, they, and he talks about it in Comedians and Cars that Jerry's like, you stuck to that bit. There's nobody there. There's a boom, and Will oh, yeah. about, there's a boom operator, and Lorne Michaels is sitting there like in the front yeah, row. Yeah. And this man, this 30-year-old man, is going like, oh, playing with cat God. toys. I can't even do an act out no. on stage. No, that, it's like... The balls that takes, or the comfort, or the, I don't know what it is. To slip, o- slip away into that world of confidence and comfort is crazy to me. No, I do a joke on stage. It doesn't land. I'm like, would you like me to kill myself? Yes, I'll do it right now. Same. I'm so sorry I tried to do comedy. I'll call my parents. You can call her a cunt. I'm Ag- sorry. Agreed. We've all seen that guy do a pratfall or a backflip, lands on his back, and, and it bombs. Oh, man, I would fly to Tahiti. <laughs> It's it's bad, but uh, yeah, Will Ferrell did it, and and the Billy Madison. I just I, I had a hard time getting into that one, but yeah, he do does do, it. Do, do. I mean, he would go on Weekend Update and do all that shit with the what was it, the vampire or the Count Jocula? Who was that guy? He would count. Remember count. that? I don't know uh, Weekend count. Update. Oh, oh, he was he had a cape on and long. Yeah. He was like a magician or something. No, I think he was an o- the opera, opera singer. Was yeah, opera. he was the opera guy. Yeah, I was touched skin, but I, I yeah, that would have because I knew it would bother you. I think I got some mental problems. Possibly. But um, no hugging. Folks, this episode of Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. Oh. Sometimes it is impossible to keep intrusive thoughts from popping in. I'm having that problem right now. Mm. And once they're in, they're tricky to get out. Oh, Let yeah. someone who understands talk you through it. If you've been thinking of starting therapy, give Better Help a try. It's totally online and is convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. With appointments by phone, by video call, or by message, you can make therapy work for your lifestyle. I can't recommend therapy enough. I went as a boy. I went in my 20s. I'm back now. And now I'm just a lifer. It just keeps me on a nice, even keel, although my therapist has been gone all month or Mm. whatever. Happy to have him back now. Wish I could have done online the way BetterHelp makes it so easy. That's what's great about BetterHelp. I know about 18 people that are all using BetterHelp. They all swear by it. They're all thrilled. They're all grateful we uh, have them as a sponsor because that's how they found out. You can be one of these people. Getting started is easy. Take a short quiz to get matched with a licensed therapist. If your therapist isn't thrilling you, don't panic. You can swap therapists with the click of a button. Mm -hmm. It's basically like Tinder, but for your mental health. We know you'll meet your perfect match. Let therapy be your map with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash Tuesdays. Mm. Sing it, sister. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday Stories brought to you by Raycon. Raycon! If you're hitting the gym, hanging on the beach, or winding down for the day, you need the perfect soundtrack. Raycon wireless earbuds are the absolute best way to listen. With three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode, you can totally personalize your experience. I love my Raycons. I use them when I hit the gym to get me pumped for a workout, and they're truly the best. This 32-hour battery life means that the party never has to stop, and they come with custom gel tips for a super comfortable in-ear fit. 
They start at half the price of the other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. Tuesday Stories listeners can get 15% off their Raycon orders at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays to save 15% off on your new Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Thank you. Anyway, so we're all sitting around a circle, and uh, they're like, we need someone to do, here's the scenario. And Christine's like there. She's like, I don't know. Everyone's got shows. What about you? I got a show. And I go... You got, I was like, uh, I was like, take the K man. I was like, get Tom Dustin. Oh, I was yeah. like, have him on. He's the funniest guy at the festival. The show's and tanking anyway. I get a text from Ken, and he's like, thanks so much. He saved the show. Funniest guy ever. I think they got to keep doing it. Oh wow, <laughs> Dusty Slay coming well, through. They're not gonna keep doing it, but oh, okay. still, he, he he brought the heat. Damn. Well, Tom is so underrated. He killed on the live show. He had great stories. That a square grouper. I mean, just <laughs> everything he says. He just wanted to keep repeating it. It. Yeah, he could have been big. He still could. He, he should leave could. this this film. By the way, how about this? I did Rogan. Have you heard of this show? Uh, Seth Rogan? It's picking up. Okay. No, uh, Bo. Bo <laughs> <Beau> Rogan. <laughs> Bogan? I don't know Bogan. I'll check him out. But it came out today. How fun is that? Isn't that fun? Just that's out in the ether now. Bogan's Heroes. I'm, I'm very excited. It's out. And uh, I got a buddy. It's so insulting. Everyone's like, you finally figured it out. And I'm like, all right. The other ones weren't bad. It was a joke. Uh, I was doing a bit. Figured out how to talk uh, into a microphone. The first episode I did, he's howling, laughing. I told the shit in the shoe yes, story. He yes. laughed. I talked about getting mugged. He was laughing. It was good. I got many messages saying they were good. For so Christ's sake, you can't make a joke with these people. No, no. The cat. You can't do the cat joke. They don't get it. So what? Tell me about it. How was it? Because that studio can be a little intimidating. Well, what did I? What was I starting to say? Some I can't about, remember. Uh, what's the scenario? Rogan. Denny's fuck. butter. Uh, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, Boy, that butter line was big. Can't wear black. Who's hotter, Ian Laura? Uh, Love Fur, by the way. He really throws it out there on his Twitter. He shits on everybody. So now he's like, everyone he sees, he's like, oh my god, they're here. Uh, yeah, these people with the public shitting. It's it's bad news. It doesn't make sense. Oh, how about this? Some some nut sweet guy. Appreciate you. Don't kill yourself. Uh oh. Yesterday, I'm walking around. He wants a hug. Okay. And you know, I got a, a hot tea in my hand. I, uh. I, I do like a. Uh, and he goes, I need a two hand hug. Come on, two hand hug. And Jesus. I'm like, Wow. I go, Nah, that's enough, man. All right, take care. He messages me like, I feel terrible. Then I'm at the diner uh-huh. with Lev, Ian, and Karen, and I go, sure. how about this psycho that was there? Oh, he, he tried to hug me. He's the waiter. No, we get up, and uh, the guy pops up. He's like, hey, man. Oh, I'm the guy. He was sitting here. Oh, man. Behind me. Oh. It was brutal. Jesus. Hugs, not drugs. We That's s- brutal. Skipped out on the bill. I just ran out. I don't blame you. Put it on Huggy Bear over here. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's crazy. What are the odds of all the Denny's in all the world? You get a uh, Hugmaster J behind you. Well, it's, it's the Denny's right at the that's festival, true. I guess. That's true, but still. But you can't be double hug. You want a hug? You're going to get the hug I give you. You can't make up <laughs> hug directions on me. No. What are you, Harvey Weinstein? Come on. Huggy Weinstein. That doesn't make sense. I liked it. I did. Huggy uh, was a bear. So I did uh, hug Rogan, and I forget what the <laughs> fuck I was bringing it up for. What uh, the hell was I talking about? about. Mm. Ah, hug. shit. Oh, so you did the show. How'd it go? You figured it out finally. You got a bit down. Did you get any laughs? Did you have any fun stories? Did you have any good connections? I didn't even try for a laugh. I went in there. All I'm right. like, I'm doing a drama podcast. You can't do it. I, I, it, it. A joke opportunity comes up. You're going to jump on it like a fat kid on butter. Well, I had a couple jokes, of course, but I was like, I'm just going to go with the flow. A couple times I had to be like, you lost me. I don't know what the hell you're talking oh, really? about. Here. Yeah, because wow. he was go, you know, going into. To his elk what, spaceships. Stuff. Well, at one point he says, um, "You know the difference between a reindeer and an elk." I don't. I thought it was a street joke. <laughs> I was like, no, what is it? Yeah, yeah, what is it, thunder? <laughs> no, I don't know. And then he started just answering, and I, I legitimately was like, I thought you were doing a bit. Oh, that's funny. Um, we got to write a punchline for that bit by the end of the pod. Yeah, good point. Let's, but it, I don't know if it was elk, elk. or reindeer. It was reindeer, and maybe it was elk. Elk and a reindeer. Never seen an elk pull a sleigh. A reindeer has a red nose. Oh, yeah. Something with the... Elk's got a cold... Oh elk. boy! All right, elk we'll, we'll come back to that. Got elk? Yeah, if you right. guys could work on this. That'd All be right. great. What the John Elkway? Uh, uh, 
Okay. Well, either way, it was good, huh? <clears throat> yeah, it was fun. I forget why I was bringing it up, though. Well, how it about that mothership, something. huh? Isn't that a hot room? My God, that is really something. And um, I did, well, I, some of the stuff I'm not supposed to talk about, oh. but I want to talk about, but we'll talk about it later. Okay, but, I'm um, excited. But yeah, Mothership was uh, unbelievable. So fucking cool. Both rooms are killer. Both rooms. I, I like that small room a lot because the ceiling is a tad high in the uh, other room, but it's mm -hmm. still great. Yeah, I think I got it on a good night. I did two nights, and um, I don't know. It was packed out, and they were hot. The earlier shows were better. It can be intimidating. The second show, though, you you look out, and it's like, it's Rogan guy. Like, it's oh, yeah. big guys uh. with tattoos all around. They're like, and uh, I felt like I had to really be like, you know, you this fucking shit. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to give them a little extra meat. You know, you got to exactly. let them know you eat food. Yeah, yeah. You like meat. You say fuck a few more times. You call something gay. Yeah, because I walked out and they were like, wait a second. All right, who's this twink? But, um, but no, you can feel it. Was it great. That, there's that a club. There's an energy there. Like, oh, something's bubbling up here. There's a line around the block. The waiters are all cool and hot. And they're all, they got like security with a machine gun. It's, it feels like something's happening. Well, it was scary going in, too, because like I've never been there. They don't know who I am. But, you know, you feel like somebody, but yeah. the people in the front, they don't know that I'm friends with Joe. Right. So I got there and uh, CJ Lang, CJ Lang, CJ Lang, that's not, his, know Lang. that's not his name at all. CJ Landry. Oh, I don't know where Lang go. came from. You know, CJ Landry. We talked about it before. Boston? Very funny guy. No, no. He's from Louisiana. Oh. But like backwoods Louisiana. I keep hearing this guy's name. I heard he's good. He's very funny. And uh, I met him in Fort Worth uh, a couple years ago or something like that. But anyways, he's hilarious. But I bumped into him. He's a door guy. So okay. I got out of my lift and he was just there. And it was like a fucking Marat. I was like, oh, my oh. God. And he's like, I'll take you there. Yeah. So I was like, thank you. The next night, he's not there. And I'm just like walking up to some lady. And she's yeah. like, you got to get a wristband. Oh, uh, boy. And I'm with Chris Allen. Oh, how'd that go? Yeah. All right, we'll talk later. <laughs> no, Chris was great, but there's very serious rules about who can be in the green room. Oh, that's tough. On Joe's night, and so somebody had to say to Chris, you know, no plaques allowed. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes over there. No, I think it's 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 gotta you gotta be close with Joe. Sure, sure. And so um, he kind of had to sit on the back of the other room. Yeah. So you want to keep them company. Yeah. But also everyone's smoking cigars and listening to music yeah. and talking about how talking COVID's shop. a cold, right, which I right. believe. Vaccine killed Lamar Hamlin or whatever. Uh, um, so you got to go in there yeah. and talk about how COVID's gay and yeah, vaccines right. are stupid or whatever. Fauci's the Antichrist. And um, so I had to keep ducking out and be like, hey, Chris, it sucks in there. You don't want to be in there. Boy, right, boy, right. Hey, stupid. And yeah. I go back in and smoke my cigar. <laughs> They're storming the Capitol over over there, folks. But, and, yeah. Well, that, that's cool. Yeah, that's fun. That is a little awkward when you got to do the back and forth. But uh, I get it from Joe's perspective because he's talking to somebody. He says something crazy. They're in there. They hear that. And then people go, how was the mothership? And go, kind of crazy. I was in the green room. And Joe said this, this, and this. They uh, take it out of context. They tweet. They blog. They queef. And that's that. I completely understand it. And, you know, we're dealing with that. Here, like we made this little smoker's lounge, and every once in a while someone pops in, and it's, it's you know, like I said, me, Bobby, Lev, yeah. Karen, and Soder, and it, we're a gang. Sure, and you're chit-chatting about who knows who. And then two guys from the band, whatever, I'm sure are great guys, but they come in and, hey, yeah, all right, we're smoking, yeah. and now you got to get to know somebody. They go, where are you from? Exactly. Where did you grow up? Yeah. And oh. I go, I just want to call my friends fat and stupid and ugly and whores. I Completely. don't want to fucking do an interview. I don't want to interview everybody. That happened to me in Paris, uh, not to be a cunt, but we did a couple shows. That's why Doug Key's a fucking champ. I'll talk all about Europe on the next step. But we go to Paris on a whim, and Doug goes, hold on, let me do some, some tweeting and texting. He sets up four shows. We set them up. They all sell out. We go to the shows. And Doug all, set up the shows? He set up the shows in Paris. Wow. Yeah, incredible. Just a day before or a day of. So we, we set it up. I put out one story. We sell it out. People, the word of mouth gets a buzzing. All the comics show up. And they go, hey, there's no green room, but the comics are a little, little nutty, so you got to hang out in this courtyard. And I go, okay. So I'm hanging out in the courtyard, and the uh, the manager guy comes out, and he goes, can you meet one guy? I go, yeah, I'll meet anybody. He comes out, and I go, hey, nice to meet you. And then I'm sitting there looking at my notes, and he's just standing there, and I'm like, where are you from? I have to do It's too yes. awkward to not interview him now. Yes. So, And then you don't want him going back, oh, I met Norman. He's a fucking 
chooch, you know, he's a, he's a diva. So you got to do the, like, oh, how long you been doing it? I just want to look at my notes. Yes, and some people have the ability to be like, hey, man, we're, we all know each other, so uh, if you could just yeah. cut, shove it on. Oh, I, I, I can never. Can't. I don't have never. the stomach for it. That's too mean. I got people I've been friends with for 20 years because I don't know how to be like, ah, oh, that's enough already with this. My wife. Yes. Same. I mean, these heroes, they're my heroes. I wanted to end this 10 years ago. Of course, of we, course. Two episodes <laughs> in, I was mutual. like, what are we doing? This yeah. is good. What'd you say? <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, uh, yeah. So that was, uh, that's a tough thing. I wish I had that, but then... I can only imagine that those people are getting shit on later. Like, ah, he told me to fuck off, fuck that guy. So you assume that's happening, but not to us. I think, and it's. I think Chris got lucky because it was a comedian who was like, oh, Joe doesn't really like anyone. Oh, yeah. And so that's like the best case scenario because I, I think sometimes Joe himself will be oh, like, you got to get out of here. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. And I get it. I mean, Joe's a, a big star and a lot of people hate him. He's a controversial person. So yeah. he doesn't know who's a fucking spy and who's a what. So... It was tough, but you had to. I, I would have a cigar, and my manager lives there too. So, uh-huh. like, I would pop out and kind of talk yeah. to them. But you're right. like, it's not even that. I, mean, like, I just want to have my cigar. Of course, of course. Yeah. And then Chris wanted to smoke weed, and everyone's smoking weed in there, but it was like tricky because, you know, it's. It was a little bit um, tricky. I felt for Chris. Yeah, and but you don't want to be on the other end of it too. One time, a guy goes, "Hey, you're going to the mothership. Can you can you put me on the list to watch?" I go, "Oh, no problem." And then he's sitting in the bar, and he goes, "When does when does uh, Rogan come out to the bar?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know." And I could tell he was just like, "Oh, I'm going to meet Rogan." He thought by me getting him in, right. he was going to meet him and take a photo with him and chat with him. And I was like, "All right, this is the last time I let somebody in." Yeah, it, it was too much. Well, this is the thing, too, you forget about, <clears throat> because we're just friends with all these people. Right. It doesn't make sense to me that it's a big deal to know, meet, you know, know, people are like, is that Mike Cannon? Exactly. Can I meet Mike? And you're right. like, what? <laughs> Cannon? <laughs> you know, Anybody be Cannon. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's still strange to me that someone has a Shane Gillis tattoo. I'm of like, course. Oh, that's good. All right. But I do get it. I remember being at an open mic one time and Victor Varnado went on and he had done Conan. And I was like, oh my God, Victor Varnado's here. <laughs> no one knows who that is, but he did Conan. But I was blown away. <coughs> I've had the same thing with Paul Nardizzi. Oh, funny guy. He was the first person I ever saw that was on TV. He was yes. in the room and it was like, Totally, like, totally. That man was on NBC. Yes, it's like Elvis is here. Holy shit! And you're like, uh, how, how, how you doing? How you doing? I never say how you doing. Uh, good to meet you. Well, good to meet you. you know how it is. All right, fuck. And then you run away. I'm all shook up. Yeah, yeah. I remember Theo Vaughn when I started comedy was on Road Rules. Yes. So this is in Louisiana in 2006. Nothing's going on. I'm nobody. I've been kicked out of six colleges. I can't get it up. And you see Theo Vaughn, and he's like this good-looking, handsome guy who's hip. He's got cool shoes on, and he's up there going. I remember one of his uh, jokes. I still remember it. He goes up, and the crowd's like, oh, my God, that guy's on MTV. There's like a little murmur going. And then he goes, uh, you know, the other day I was sick, and somebody said, uh, yeah, you're a little under, under the weather. And he goes, hmm, that's a weird phrase. Aren't we all... Under the weather, and I was like, <laughs> ah! I remember I shit blood. I jerked off. I couldn't. Love it. My mind was blown. I was like, what a bit! Oh. What a premise! Are you kidding? Well, now I look back and I'm like, well, it's not the best, but at that's the time, ten, that's ten worst bits I ever heard. Oh, come on, it makes sense. <laughs> it was a while ago, right? Yeah, it's 2006. Oh, okay, I yeah. No, that bit sucks. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, oh. I thought it was uh, Rembrandt. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Plus, you know, the shoes and the TV, and he had a hot girlfriend. The whole thing was fascinating. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm dying over here. <laughs> we got to get a stogie in you. I know. I'm going to go smoke after this. My eyes hurt. I don't know what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else happened down there? Yeah, so Chris was great. It was great to see Chris. Plus, I had a black bodyguard, which was nice. Oh, he's a big dude. Yeah, so that was fun. And um, But we didn't get a chance to hang, because I, I, Wednesday, I, I was just, like, busy. I went to get a new iPhone. I have a new phone, which is exciting. Oh. Which, by the way, I got the new phone because I thought we were going to shoot the episode on my phone. Oh, wow. I had no space. So I did this all just for this and, and Natalie saved the day. Thank and I don't know your name. Thank you, Nat. Hi, Austin. Austin. You work for gas too? No. Oh, oh, you're just a uh, homeless guy. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, you're one of the people we're talking about. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, just you want to be nice, but you were right. You were like, you got to, if it's a 10 minute walk, you got to allot 30 minutes for the stops. Yes. Just getting up the escalator. One guy's like, can you sign my book? Can you call my dad? Can you sue me? Whatever. Uh. 
So that takes six minutes, and you get ten feet, and you got to hit another guy. And I then you get ten feet, and you hit another guy. Well, this is like a make a wish for me. You've blown up. You're in the stratosphere. Everyone's very <laughs> excited for you. But here. You're like that walking around New York. No, no, oh, this is crazy. I've, I've this seen is it. crazy. But here, I'm like a special needs kid. I mean, I walk in, people are chanting my name and touching my ass and hugging me. I feel like I'm, I'm going to move here. <laughs> this is wild. I've <laughs> never felt love like this. Don't move here. Holy shit. But yeah, yeah, this is fun. And it's all great. And the, I got to say, the, the fans or the audience or whatever you want to call them, Sweetest people on the planet, the just best. huge comedy nerds, so nice. Everybody thinks this is a fucking rally with swastikas and uh, rape rooms. It's all good eggs. There is a rape room. It's one level up. Oh, shit, I missed <laughs> it. I did it in the closet. But uh, no, it really is. Uh, it's a fucking love fest. It's tremendous. Yeah. That's why I was a little off put the live episode. There was a couple of like kind of antagonistically a little bit. heckly people. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? I know. That's not I, what we do here. I blame the room. But I think, you know, people are juiced up. They see a fist fight outside. They got Jason Ellis's dick in their face. You know, they're they're a little uh, toxic up. Yeah. I mean, everyone is so goddamn nice and sweet and autistic. It's really uh, mm -hmm. it's a special place to be. Very nice. Thanks and for having us. I, I love it. I, I just I won't miss it. I'm going to have a baby next year. I'm going to bring him wow. here and pass him around like a like a fucking like Lewis. Yeah. Let him crowd surf all over until he's off in uh, Reno. And see Lewis, how f happy Lewis is. Yes. Sure, he's throwing ice at his employees, but that's Lewis. I mean, <laughs> he's crowd surfing and people are showing tits, and it's just awesome. Well, you know what it is for for Lewis, because I think Lewis is a confident guy. He's got a big, healthy ego, and then here at Skankfest. He's like, yeah, this is how it should be all the time. Right. The way everyone's treating me now with the cowboy hat on and the Versace pajamas or whatever he's wearing, he thinks like, oh, this is this is the baseline. Right. I think he thinks like this is how it normally should be. So the rest of the the rest of the time, the rest of the 360 days a year, that's weird. Well, I think all the time, I'm like, I would hate to be a celebrity. It seems awful, but I walk around here, I'm like. Nah, I can get used to it. Ah, I'm right. taking photos and shaking hands and kissing women. Cut that. Yeah, this um, part is all fun, but it's the it's the online hate. That's that's when you're like, oh, this kind of sucks. Like like Hassan Minaj said, uh, hey, you get too big, you know, that's what happens. And you're like, yeah, they're gonna come at you at some point. We're back. Uh, here we hey. are. Boy, the camera's just cut off. Wow. At least they don't know how to fucking edit a podcast here. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened. Yes. The cam, the batteries died. We lost a whole chunk Zach of the podcast. Zach Amico walked in. It shook the room. <laughs> Everything fell down. Ooh, the whole middle of the podcast just got nipped out. But yeah. yeah, that's a hell of a story you told. Oh, yeah. I'll retell it again in a year. Now, a woman like this, does this turn you on? If the folks at home that are listening on audio, there's a visual of a woman with giant tits wearing yeah. a tie, short skirt, <laughs> tattoos, everywhere, machine gun and big <laughs> lips and a green eye shadow. You I, like that? I'm into it. I don't understand the Tommy gun. Uh, first of all, where, where, what does she need a machine gun for? And secondly, why does she have one that's 80 years old? That I don't understand. Is she gonna? Is she hanging out with Dillinger? Is she going to rob a bank and a Model T? Tim Dillinger. But uh, <laughs> I like the tats and she's got an ample bosom and a nice mug. So yeah, why the hell not? I'm all horned <laughs> up. I've been gone for two weeks. My wife is 95 months pregnant. This Her is my DeRosa impression. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Her tits are the size of basketballs. She's got what? a big fat stomach and a, and a big ass stomach and a big stomach ass. And careful, you're gonna lose that mic. You're getting tight, taut. Oh, I gotta spin right. you back. Thank you. Uh, there you go. All right. But Good uh, to be back. how many times around? No feet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm all horned up. I haven't had sex in nine days. She's pregnant, so you feel like a man when your wife is pregnant. Yes. And there's all this. I, I'm looking at this. I just want to lift that skirt I and know. stick a couple fingers in there and make you smell them. Hold on. Let me see if I can look up anything. No, nothing there yet, but full bush. <laughs> But yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm in my my hotel suite. the The nuggets not bad. Nuggets good. But I got I got 13 nuggets of a uh, washcloth all crunched up. I'm stepping on popcorn in there. Yeah, it's. Ba have you been to the circa? I walk by it. Do yourself a favor. Don't go in. Don't oh. visit anybody's rooms. Now, there's two hotels that some comedians are at Circa, which is the newest hotel in Las Vegas. Is that right? Yes. Brand new. And so are you, where are you guys? If you tell me you're at Circa, I'm going to fucck and take my own life. No, I'm at the Nugget. With All, right. All right. Hell Circa yeah. du Soleil. Come by my room. Yeah. Um, but and then mine. I went to... <laughs> Making a couple house calls. We like to sexually harass the volunteers that we don't know that well. Well, you come too there just to even it out. Yeah, that makes it, that makes it better. Yeah. 
Um, He's a volunteer. I went to Bobby's room to uh, suck him off. Sure. And <laughs> the Circa, you can't believe how much better that really? hotel is. Because we have junior suites and we're, you know, junior stop good, <laughs> junior, junior sale. Mint. And um, they're nice. <laughs> 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 you, go to, you go over the circa, Bobby has the curtains that you press, and they oh, go, Oh, that fat bastard. <laughs> it's two buildings. He's got two rooms. Two rooms. It's like a living room divided by a wall. His what? toilet sucks the shit right out of your oh, ass. Oh, I love a shit suck. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. What new carpet, hell? new everything. I, I'm embarrassed to go over there. Ah, he's shaped like a circa. But um, yeah, what does he need two rooms for? One for him and his old self? Circa 400 pounds. But yeah. um <laughs> But it's just a, a no, and, this, and the, the the nugget. It just smells like my grandmother's asshole on Christmas Eve. I know, Eve. I know. It's got that old mothball wooden pussy smell. <laughs> it really it's like somebody opened a trunk full of a dead lady's clothes. <laughs> it really does. By the way, we're killing with the two uh, oh, special needs kits. Over All here. right. Well, we could have used you at the live show because that fizzled out like uh, <laughs> Lewis's dick. That was a bomb. Natalie, you have something to add there? I thought you were going to say something. Oh, you no, said no, it's irrelevant. Oh, okay. She's at the nugget as well. Are you at the nugget there, volunteer? Okay. <laughs> no, he volunteered. He's oh, like, he's do you live here? A, it's a make-a-wish. He, oh, you're from Vancouver. From Vancouver. You're from a different country, you weirdo. Oh, he's, my God. Oh. He's laying on the sidewalk. He's fucking homeless. I'll give you a couple bucks after this. Maybe a, maybe a free uh, liquid death. Now, are you a fan of the show? Have you seen the show? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Really? How about that? It's yeah. all pipes. Now, what are you vo- what are you doing? You're just volunteered to listen to podcasts? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> you can do that at home. Podcast assist. I think I did the focus. So. Oh, hey, <laughs> focus. Another person in okay. here. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. Auto all right. focus. Well, good to see you. Good to have you back. All, all right. right. Have we'll, you gotten, uh, I hope we'll, you get laid. I don't know. I don't want to ask too many questions. Uh, but, the, uh, uh, the male to female ratio, what would you say? 95 to 5? 90 10? What do you think? Uh, I think and that's percentages. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> You're right. Um, 10 to 1. I 10 don't know. to 1, but then I mean, there's a trans, a couple trans in there, so that muddies the waters. I think that uh, I heard this is the most women. There's more women this year. I feel like I've, I've noticed that. Um, but, yeah, it's still probably, yeah, I'm going to say 8 to 1. There's eight a lot to of one. women because there's a lot of... <laughs> Couples out there. Oh yeah, I true, think. true. But they, they all, they all swing. Because when you see, you'll see like a really hot woman, yeah. and then you're like, whoa! And there's a guy right behind right. with like tattoos and muscles, and you're like, ah, that checks out. Exactly. But it's nice. It's kind of comforting knowing that some of these uh, juggalos and comic cons on ketamine can uh, get get a lady. <laughs> of course. I mean, I think we're funny guys. I'm, I'm not talking about them. No, but I'm saying. Normal people listen. They're like, this is funny. Oh. It's not all just, you know, retards and no. pipes. I mean, it's... <laughs> That's a horrible uh, radio show. Retards and pipes <laughs> in the morning. But, yeah, no, I, you're right. I, um, I think you got something there. But, yeah, I, I do think this is a, it's a Comic-Con mixed with a little bit of uh, crank. Uh, yeah. no, that's how I would describe the audience. Well, it's, and there's a lot of lot of drugs and, and mushrooms and weed. And I, I just, uh, you know, I was a big weed booze guy, more booze. But all the people on acid and mushrooms just at a festival, I can't wrap my head around yeah. the, um, what do you call that? The fucking stimulus. Oh, yeah, right. On shrooms. Like, I, I'm just, I don't know how you do it. And last night... Uh, you know, I don't. Maybe she doesn't want it, but my Karen was on mushrooms. I yeah. think she said it several times. She well, did. not like outing any. But we did two back to back live podcasts, and it's hard to get big laughs in a podcast. Yeah, and so she kept being like on the real last podcast. She's like, "Oh my god, this is horrible. I suck." Oh, and I'm like, "This, wow. you gotta relax. It's fine." But yeah. I'm like, I know how I feel not on mushrooms. Right. When you do a big line and it gets nothing, of course. On mushrooms, you must be like. Oh, I fuck. know. What, what, what is she thinking? You got to do that after. And look, I'm, I'm not judging. I like a shroom as much as the next guy, but you got to do that later on a live pod. You got to be fresh. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I felt for everyone on mushrooms. I talked about it before. I bumped into Josh Potter at Skankfest two years ago, and he's like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'm on acid." And yeah. I was like, "What?" A lot of people last night were on acid. Acid's going around. It's in the water. Ari spiking drinks. No kidding. I want to be on acid in the trees, yes. in the mountains, by the pyramids. You know, playing Sega Genesis, whatever. <laughs> Not meeting fucking interns. Yeah. No offense, Sega Genesis. But yeah, uh, and I also. Say that I've noticed that 
these after parties, they're at a strip club, they're at a nightclub, they're at a fucking uh, Sea World. Give me a, <laughs> give me a. This should be the green room where we have an after party, like twelve guys, a couple of gals, and a couple of beers, and we'll just chit and chat and laugh. That's what I say. The same thing. And uh, <clears throat> I was in bed at twelve o five a.m. Wow. last night. I That's was in insane. my hotel at 11, but I'm also getting here at 10.30 a.m. I'm a day person. Why 10.30 a.m.? Well, yesterday I had... Oh, what was the regs at noon. The regs was at noon today. Yesterday I had a 1 p.m. spot. Wow. So you come over, and uh, I got here at 11 yesterday. So Bobby sat, Bobby and I sat in the little smoker's lounge and had a cigar oh. and bullshitted, and then people come in and ran his easies there and soda oh, and the whole thing. that's lovely. So, uh, yeah, you spend the day there. See, that's good, too, because do you, got, do you get the festival anxiety? A bit. I less than that. I used to. I, what well, do you mean, like FOMO or what? No, no, like, well, the hangover really... So you don't have that problem. No. But the hangover kicks it up. But I'll wake up. I'm like, oh, you have that whole rigor mortis thing. Then you have to, like, get up and then cry. And then you have to, like, get back and you pop a couple Tylenol. You do a coffee. You start to come back to life. And you look out the window. You're like, I can't face it. I can't go out there. And then you start thinking about bumping into comics. And you're like, I got nothing to say. I'm not. I'm an introvert. And I have to get over that hump and then just force myself which is why going out at 10.30 is nice. Because once you, it's like a pool. Once you're in it, you're good. But it's that jumping in that's right. hard for me. Well, to me, it's like, bless you. Thank you. I, like, to me, it's, you get to a point where sometimes you're like, oh, everyone's going to the strip club. But you're like, at 1 a.m. Like, oh, the FOMO. I'm not a 3 a.m. guy anymore. And, and the, the trouble just raises the yes, stakes. Yes, yes. And I'll tell you what. When I wake up, I woke up at 8.30 a.m. I do a bunch of push-ups. I jog down. Wow. The, I went for a run. I meditate. I'm texting with some buddies. I go to a meeting. I get here. I smoke a cigar. By noon... I've had a day, and yeah. I feel like a million bucks, and everyone comes straggling in. I mean, DeRosa blew a couple guys. Of course, and, yeah. And Thank everyone, you again for that. You know, and, and, and Tom Dustin's like, I lost 300 bucks, and ah. I think someone else lost 1,000 bucks and whatever. Yeah. And I remember everything I said. Right. I remember every single moment of every conversation. So and, true. Um, There's a lot of perks to not drinking. It's nice. And I slept for eight hours. Oh, my Lord. Didn't toss, didn't turn, just woke wow. up and went, woo. I watched some college football. and uh, Good on you. Yeah, it's a nice well, way to live. But, you know, at 11 o'clock, I'm like, all right. I'll yeah, that, that makes sense. And you're you're on a good uh, what do you call that? The schedule. Yeah, and routine. Al also, the hang gets worse. Like yes. we're in the dressing room, or whatever you call it, the artist green room, and everyone's standing and loud. What? Oh, yeah. hey! And everyone's coming over, going. And also, the thing that at nighttime is people want to fucking network. Oh, oh <gasps> and you go, yeah. oh, hey, hey. Whereas in the daytime, everyone's just kind of like, what are you doing today? Yes, that kind yes. Of shit. It's so. a little more low energy. And the shame spiraling I've seen out here, it's only been, what, what are we on, day two, day three? Day two. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. Two and a half? Yeah, I know. We're like halfway through the festival. Okay. So Oof. <laughs> I think more than halfway. It's a little more than halfway, but still, yeah, it that's... feels there's a long way to go. <laughs> a lot of people are leaving tonight and tomorrow. Oh, really? Stuff. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Okay, but my point is... I wake up, I'm like, what have I done? I didn't eat all that vodka. I don't remember the last two hours. How did I get home? That whole thing. So you have that shame. I'm 40 years old. I got to get my act together. And then I talked to another guy. I'm not going to say who. He got all coked up. He's like, I never do coke. I did a ton of rails. I've hooked up with two hookers. They took my money. I yelled at them. We got into a fight. The police weren't contacted. We got Nothing happened, but it was a whole thing. And I'm like... He's like, I felt so bad this morning. I'm like, holy shit. I can't, I felt bad. I can't imagine what the fuck kind of spiral you went through mentally. Yeah, it's just no, it's no good and it, it's not sustainable. No, is no. the thing. And you get um, a story out of it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was just talking about that with, with Louis after Louis Katz after our live pod. He's like, don't you miss those days and you don't get any more stories? I'm like, do I miss the days of a 300 pound woman sucking my dick while she's taking a, a fucking uh, piss? <laughs> and and my buddy is fucking a grandmother at the same time. Ah, well, I mean, it's a listening laughter. It's a great story, but the short answer is no. Sure, I sure. Don't. And you got the story, and then you move on. I got the story, and, and there's other stories. Now I got Lev Fur reaching for butter in his pocket. Yeah, That's a good tale. Yeah, boy. 
Can't believe it's not better. Uh, Butter. But yeah, you know. I don't know. We went off on that. We would turn this turn into Mindful Metal Jacket over here. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the anxiety's real, and uh, maybe I got a taste of it, and I got I got horned up for a little uh, anxiety oh, yeah, talk. In. By the way, check. I got to plug the... I don't plug anything. By the way, I got to the end of Rogan, three-hour show, and I'm like, oh, by the way, I have a new special. And he's like, great. Uh, I never even got to talk about it. How funny it. is that? That's the whole point of doing it. Oh, that's what I was going to say earlier about the Tom Dustin oh, movie. That's why I brought up Rogan. <laughs> That's why I brought up Rogan was I made this documentary about Tom Dustin. We were talking about how funny he is. It's good to get a little buzz going. Sure. And uh, I brought it up on Rogan. We were talking. And then he's like, well, play a little bit. We'll, we'll end the podcast. Play a little bit of the movie. Give Whoa. me a scene from the movie. And I was like, what? Whoa. I, I don't have the clips. I got to get the thing. Oh, and so then God. Rogan's talking. And I'm like trying to find an email. I'm texting my producer. And oh, letter. my God. And then I was like, I can't find it. And he's like, ah, I'll just tweet it when it comes out. And I was like this. God. Fuck my ass until Damn. I turn blue. Well, any other show, you got it. You're your shit prepped. You got your clips ready to go. You know, and they go, they throw to it. You know, yes. but this show is all wacky, <laughs> and there's a spaceship behind him, and he's high. So yeah, I don't blame you. No, we were talking about aliens raping Biden. I didn't think. Oh, that sounded oh, loose. That's that was gonna a be wet ugly. burrito. <laughs> I, I didn't think we were going to fucking show my movie. But then I talked to uh, Patrick Holbert, who's the editor and DP on the film, yeah. the co-producer. Sure. And, uh, what, he robbing like, a bank in the 40s? <laughs> he was like, yeah, you can't just show the movie. It's not done. And I was like, I know, but I would have. And he's like, no, you can't have that. Well, so get, you have a camera? Get one clip. Get one clip cooking, and then tweet that when they're him. I'll get a tweezer, or whatever the fuck you call it. Uh, <laughs> Teaser, a sizzle. <laughs> I'll get a, a trailer. Yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, I'll get a trailer, and I'll move into it because I'm quitting showbiz. No, I'll, I'll send him the trailer. He'll post it, whatever. This movie's going to be big. Mark my words. I loved it. I saw a little snippet. Anyways, I wanted to plug Mindful Metal Jacket. I just recorded one with Katie Hannigan. You popped in. Barely. And, uh, it's a great... Yeah, no, you're all over it. Oh, yeah. Watch. Tune into the Katie. You'll see, Mark. Two hours in. It's a big episode, but uh, I got I to gotta get better at plugging. I yeah. suck at plugging. I don't, I'm not good at plugging either. Every clip I post, I get the, you were in England? No one told me. And I'm like, are you kidding? I was promoting like a motherfucker. Believe me. I mean, I got I got people going, hey, you finally did Rogan. Good uh, on you. And I'm like, I've done nine episodes. I've spent 14 hours in that goddamn studio. Jamie and I are dating. Yeah. <laughs> J-Mo. It's so funny because everything is Googleable. You know, they're like, you were here? And I'm like, yeah, Google it. You First time doing Rogan. You could Google how many times I did it. I know. It's all on the magic box there. It is weird to think I've spent eight hours of my life in that studio. Or yeah. more than eight hours, more. actually. Yeah, ten probably. Probably. Well, anyway, I don't know. I guess we could start to wrap up. I don't know how long we've been doing it. We got to cut 11 minutes out of the middle of the podcast. I think that was about three minutes of uh, wackiness. Maybe yeah. two, three. Uh, oh, yeah. 55 minutes. Oh, we're at 55 minutes. Yeah. But okay, the, bad, the bad was two minutes. We'll put it on the Patreon. I'm down with that. Hey. Wait, really? I don't know. Okay, we'll, Maybe talk, we'll talk about it. We went off on the rails a little bit. Um, all right, where are you going to be? What do you got? What well, day is it? I don't even well, know. Let me throw this up your ass and see if it gives you colon cancer. Oh, tonight, the Gramercy. Don't let us forget oh, to plug that. The Gramercy, plug Chris DiStefano. Plug, plug it. Are you are garbage? You what a lineup. Both the Are You Garbage guys and Chris D. Gramercy fucking tonight. That's a huge lineup. Bang for your buck. It's going to sell out. Get your tickets. Come on by. All right, what were you going to say? What day uh, you were going to plug oh, something? Oh, yeah, well, so I got this theater tour cooking, and everything's selling really well. We even added some shows. Fuck yeah. One city is like two tickets. Hmm. What does that mean? Is it Vegas? It's Oklahoma City, which oh. I've done before and sold sold out the club, added shows, but this this theater run, it's just something about it. I don't know if there's a drought or an inflation or uh, something happened, an Oklahoma City bombing. Well, certainly that's not a huge market. Uh, there's only one professional sports team that got it three years ago or whatever. Okay. Uh, 10, 15, whatever. It's not a huge city. It's not one of the major markets. Yeah. And it's not as cool. And that's a place you're like, nobody ever comes here. Thank right. you. They might uh, not be getting the word. They might. Be, I don't think they have TikTok yet or whatever. But I've done the club. Like, yeah. Then that usually How long that. ago did you do it? Two years. I don't Yikes. know. It's just it's just weird to see doing great, doing great, zilch, doing great, doing great, doing great, doing great. I it's something off. Mm. Something's off. Yeah, I don't know. I never had this before. Did you make a Native American joke or a uh, cowboy joke or? Uh, oh, you know what? Did you say Oklahoma? Oh, uh, that's not bad. Just when I opened for Bert at Oklahoma City uh, Arena, I uh, said last time I was here. 
I bombed, but you guys have seen a worse bombing, and they booed me. Ah, uh, that could be something. That could be something. I never even thought of that. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, 20,000 people going, ugh. Yeah, maybe that's it. I guess. It's a bad tragedy. Yeah, Mc- yeah, Mc- most tragedies are bad. McVeigh, yeah, good yeah. point. Well, wow, uh, the Shakespearean ones are good. Ah, uh, true, true. I mean, I never read them. No. Doth neuf no hell. Shut up, you fucking queer. Yeah, I find him a little overrated. <laughs> you fucking dork. Uh, but yeah, all right. So yeah, Kyle to pick Oklahoma up. City. I think it's going to pick up. Oklahoma City, what's the date? Mm. Uh, two weeks. It's a Saturday. October 13th. October 13th. Get yourself down to OKC and suck that Norman cock, baby. Yeah, just a, just a, an anomaly. Yeah, just give it a lick, a uh, Tootsie Pop lick. Come on down there. And wh- what's the website? MarkNormanComedy.com. And get in there. Get there fast and then take it slow. And uh, I'm in Philly this weekend, my last Ooh. big weekend for the baby, October 5th through the 7th. And those tickets are mostly gone. And then I plugged it on Rogan. So now you're really up against it. So act fast. And then uh, November, I'm doing a date when my baby's 18 days old. Wow. Bad, bad precedent to start, probably. How about that? Is that Philly Helium? What do you got there? Philly Helium's this weekend, October 5th through the 7th. And then DC Improv. I oh. believe we're pro-rating it just to do Friday, Saturday, because I don't want to be gone for three days because I have a baby. I'm one of these guys now. Chocolate City. November 17 and 18, DC Improv. And then uh, I think Tacoma in January. I got a lot of time off now. Um, check out my Metal Jacket. I'm doing a really nice podcast. I have the CQ, the legend on. Oh, how was that? It was good. It was fun. Soder listened to it. He's like, oh, man, that was great. Oh, yeah, I'm well, like, C- you listen to my podcast. I'll, I'll listen to anything CQ's on. All right. Give it a listen. I and, will do. Um, check it out. Subscribe to my YouTube. The pod, uh, the specials are out there, of course. And Yes, yeah, specials, YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> some Netflix stuff. Give it a whirl, folks. And thank you to Austin and Natalie. Well, Austin didn't do anything, but thank you, Natalie, Natalie. for uh, doing this for us. And figuring out how to send this to our producer would be awesome. We'll see you at the Nugget. Thank you so much. Thank you.